This evening I'm looking at this Autophon ST80SE. Uh, th what this is, is a uh, matching transformer used for matching moving coil trans um, cartridges to a moving magnet input of a phono amplifier. Um, Autophon stuff is always very good, very high quality, uh, and this was bought to me by uh, one of my sort of fairly regular customers who sends, sends me stuff to repair. Um, he he wanted to see if I could actually get this to work. Apparently it was given to him by a friend of his who uh, bought it a couple of years ago. Uh, we don't know the full story, but he took the uh, took the thing apart because he said it wasn't working. Uh, no idea, so he bought a bought a new uh, um, preamplifier instead and, and and gave this to this other chap uh, who wants to try and get it working. And obviously, why not? You know, who wants to throw stuff away? that's uh, of good quality like this. So basically what this is, is it takes the low, uh, low impedance, low output of a moving coil cartridge, uh, steps up the voltage slightly and matches it to a, I think it's 47Ks of standard input for a moving magnet cartridge. So it's a matching transformer with a, a bit of a step up as well. Now these uh, moving coil transformer uh, systems are usually uh, more esoteric than the, just the sort of like the standard electronic preamplifier. Uh, the big advantage with something like this is they don't actually induce any electronic noise. This is a totally passive unit. There's there's nothing to it. There's no nothing to power or anything. It's simply this transformer for the left and transformer for the right. That's all it all it comprises of. Around the back is the inputs and the outputs. So basically, you plug your your tone arm into the uh, input connection so input for the uh, left and input for the right and then the outputs are taken here strange way of doing it you think the inputs will be here and the outputs will be here or vice versa but no they've got them sort of probably to keep the cross talk as uh, uh, best as possible so if you keep the audio channels far apart then you uh, don't have any problems with uh, or reduced problems with cross talk and cross talk is a capacitive uh, effect usually at this sort of frequency um, and it's basically where if you put a signal in here and don't have a, anything connected to the other channel but the wire is running close by you'll get a capacitive effect across to the uh, other channel and you can actually hear the audio coming through and that's basically cross talk and to keep them f physically as far apart as possible will give you the best cross talk uh, performance. Um, ground connection is here for the tone arm which grounds the, 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 the tone arm connection uh, so that basically you, you so you've got your turn arm input comes there and there and your ground connections there and the outputs go to your uh, moving magnet input of the uh, of the uh, amplifier so unlike some of the moving uh, moving coil and moving magnet preamplifiers this has no RIA equalization this is uh, in in practice a perfectly flat preamplifier so if you feed it with a say like a 20 ohm uh, one millivolt input the output will be 47k uh, approximately maybe four or five millivolts I'm not sure what the uh, step up ratio is so let me just draw you that on the, on a bit of uh, paper so you can see roughly what I'm talking about and trying to make it a little bit easier so we've got a simple circuit very simple you've got a transformer here you come in and you go out there so there's your there's your first terminals here and your so that's your input and that's your input to your uh, moving coil cartridge okay so that's straightforward enough then you've got the transformer and then you've got the output which has got more turns on it and that goes to your preamp or moving magnet input and that's approximately 47k at a maximum of probably 50 millivolts okay so that's your standard moving magnet input and this will be usually around 20 ohms something like that 20 ohms and around oh let's say one to three millivolts uh, depending on the uh, the type of uh, moving coil cartridge you have, the, the sort of more expensive ones tend to be actually, funny enough, lower um, lower output. So basically, that's all we all it does is it matches the 
the 20 ohms to the 47k and give you the right level and the right matching. If you try and put a moving magnet cartridge, a moving coil cartridge on a moving magnet input, the sound is uh, very, very quiet. You'll, you'll hardly be able to hear anything um, and it buggers up all the uh, matching as well. Now, obviously, the, the, moving coil, the moving magnet input has the RIA equalization in built in, and what that is, just for those who don't know, you basically got a frequency response of 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. I'll just give you a rough idea what this is. So, if we do a chart here, and this is your 1 kilohertz crossover point here, it's 1 kilohertz here. So, what it will do on the uh, preamplifier. So the amplifier will boost the bass like that, come to, and then drop the treble. And what you what that does is it reduces background noise from the uh, surface of the record. Uh, and then the, what the cartridge does, and how the record is recorded, is the total opposite. So you it it, it cuts the bass and boosts the treble. So that's your that's your record. This is very crude on it and that's your amp and when you null those out together you'll get a in theory a perfectly flat frequency response so basically you're what you're doing is you're masking uh, noise from the uh, from the tr from the record that uh, reduces um, tracking noise uh, surface noise and and all that sort of thing clicks and pops static and things like that because you're you're boosting the bass and you're cutting the treble the only thing you do do is you you still get the the low frequency rumble of of a, you know, any any uh, turntable that's got noisy bearings or anything like that so this is what we're looking for. We're looking for on the input. We're looking for an input of sort of very low impedance, probably less than 20 ohms, and an output of sort of 47k. Uh, so that will be the first thing to check. And we can check that with the multimeter. Uh, see what we get on both the channels, and uh, after that, then we need to possibly do a, a check with for inductance, or, uh, just to see, to make sure the transformer hasn't been damaged in some ways. Um, in theory, all it's going to be, worst case scenario with this thing, is going to be a broken wire. Um, the way these transformers have been taken off, it looks a bit sort of, they're very vulnerable. You've got quite a mess hanging on to some, some flimsy wires here, as you can see. So we need to look at that. Uh, this is basically your primary and secondary transformer. Looks like just twisted pairs. There's another one there. A screen connection here, that will go back to the... Uh, Earth connection on the uh, on the preamplifier box. So I think the first thing to do is we'll buzz out the um, inputs uh, and get a, we'll get a meter sorted and set up, and then we'll just see if we can see anything obvious that's wrong, and then we'll investigate a bit further. Okay, so simple setup. I've got the uh, fluke meter here on ohms range, and I'm just going to check the input of the. Uh, uh, transformers just to see what resistance we get. We should see a fairly low resistance here, sort of like I would think probably probably less than 20 ohms, but I'm not entirely sure. So we're just going to go through and check these. Basically, we're looking for them to be the same. The input of this channel should be the same as the input of that, and the output of this channel should be the same as that. So we connect it up to this BNC lead for our phono adapter. So let's go to input one. And straight away we've got open circuit, so that's not a good sign. So we've got an open winding there. Let's go to the output. And that's pretty poor as well. No, nothing there. Let's go to the other channel. Okay, 135 ohms. That's in the output. That sounds probably okay. And the input should be lower, I would have thought. Got nothing at all. So, yeah. All right, there's clearly something, clearly something wrong there. Uh, I'm not sure what. So I think the th next thing to do is take this cover off and have a look to see if anything's been messed about with inside. Okay, that's what's inside, and you can clearly see that someone's been messing with this. Nothing's connected up. This wire's fractured here. These aren't. This is solid core wire, so obviously everything's broken. That's your ground connection. That's your input signal lead. There's another one here. This side is broken off. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Uh, so I think what we'll do is that looks like that's probably the input for there. So we can connect that, resolder that back to there. That one there looks like that is a 
connection to there as well. So I'll reconnect those two up and then we can um, maybe, that's a ground connection, that probably just all that does goes to the earth tag. So I'm going to send that, oh, see how frattle, brittle this wire is? I'm going to replace that with something a bit more sensible I think. Uh, but um, So this, obviously I had to be very careful with these wires because these wires are actually connected to the transformer. Uh, so we'll solder those back on and uh, you see there's some matching resistors here as well that are being used to uh, match the uh, match the transformer properly. So let's get these wires reconnected um, and then I think it might, might be easier than I thought actually. So let's get these reconnected, uh, get it back together and then do another resistance check and then we can uh, maybe connect it up to the Roden Schwartz audio analyzer or audio uh, signal generator because it's got a low, low output impedance and just see if everything looks okay. Okay I think I made the connections in the right place let's just check it again see if we've got any continuity now. So uh, meter's falling over, I can't see the meter, can you? Let's get the meter in the view. Okay. So One, 10 ohms, that's what I'm sort of looking for. This one, not showing anything on that one. Okay, 10 ohms and 145 ohms, 130 ohms, there's 140 ohms there. Okay, so we've got a problem with that channel there, and that's the input of the left channel. So let's pull it apart again, just move this transformer out and see if anything happens. No. So that's pretty reassuring there's nothing broken there. Maybe a broken fracture connection there that I can't see. So let's uh, take the thing apart again and have another look. Yep, and there's your problem. The, the wires uh, hasn't taken properly. So I'm going to have to strip this back, scrape it, because it's enameled wire. Uh, scrape that back, desolder that. It looks like it's lead-free lead solder as well. It's very reluctant to solder. So let's scrape that back and we'll have another go. Right, let's try that. Uh, Resold that wire on. Uh, it looked like the enamel hadn't been stripped off properly. So let's see if we get something a bit more sensible now. So we've got the right channel. It was working okay. So it should... All right, three ohms, 150, left channel, three ohms, 136, so 136, 140. It just goes to show that the transformers aren't particularly well matched. I don't think there's a problem there. But uh, obviously the DC resistance is slightly different. So I think, yep, yeah, it looks like it's working. Uh, it looks like we've got continuity. And the next thing will be to uh, solder these uh, two flying wires back onto the earth connection. Uh, and then we'll mount the transformers properly so they're secure. And uh, I suppose the next thing to do is put some audio through it and see if it actually works. Okay, they're the sort of like the finials that hold the transformer in place. These two aluminium um, turned pieces of aluminium, <laughs> basically anodized aluminium. Um, Continuity is good. Uh, they, uh, basically, what I'm going to do now is reconnect this uh, earth point. I'm going to. Um, there was a wire running from this to the chassis, but uh, it's impossible to get that on there without breaking it. So what I'm going to do is this. This point's bonded to this aluminium bracket pretty well. I'm just going to get a twist drill on the inside, and then just basically clean off the aluminium or clean off the anodizing. So we've got a, a good earth bond to the to the chassis and screw it back up once we've reconnected those two wires and it should be ready to be tested. Okay, what we're doing here is we're feeding the audio output from the uh, Roden Schwartz signal generator. A termination is at 20 ohms, so it's a 20 ohm imp source impedance. Um, our frequency is, let me just show you our frequency, is one kilohertz and our amplitude is two millivolts. We're feeding that into the uh, transformer system or the transformer matching unit, moving core transformer matching unit, whatever you want to call it, step up transformer. This is our output here. Uh, now we're not, we're only uh, inputting into a, uh, a one meg input or 10 meg or whatever the input 
impedances of this. It's not, not selected on 50 ohms at the moment, but you can see clearly here that we've got a good output, uh, 20, 40, 60 millivolts, 65 millivolts peak to peak. Uh, that's our left channel, and there's our right channel. You tie them together, they're perfectly in phase, and they're a nice and clean signal. We'll just adjust the output of the uh, signal generator, and also we'll do a sweep. Let's do a frequency sweep, actually. So frequency sweep. That's two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four kilohertz. Let's go to let's go to a frequency of twenty kilohertz. Levels good. Now, what it will probably tend to do is you drop off to very low frequencies. So it will tend to you'll get a drop off in um, response. That's a sort of natural. Um, effect of a transformer anyway. So let's go to 100 hertz. It's still pretty good, you see, but our amplitude has dropped. We could actually do a frequency sweep here. Let me set up the uh, frequency sweep of the uh, Roden Schwartz, uh, and then we can look at the response and the output. We could actually connect it up to the audio analyzer, I suppose, and then just see its frequency response there. That might be a, give us a better idea. But let's put it on the scope so you get a better visual impression on the uh, on the distortion of the waveform, etc. Right, we're doing a sweep from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. I expect a quite a significant roll off below probably 100 hertz or so, which is fine for a turntable because most turntables have a sort of like a rumble filter built in that gives us sort of like a minus 3 dB per octave roll off below probably 100 hertz or so. So we're going to start the sweep. We're at 20 hertz now. It's a fairly fast sweep. I'm uh, going to start the sweep and you can see the amplitude on the waveform. So let's go. That's 300 hertz. Now this probably isn't the ideal representation of how flat the, the, the uh, actual unit is because my output impedance isn't matched. My input impedance is matched pretty well, but you can see it's pretty good actually. We're at one kilohertz here and it's climbing. I'm just gonna alter the time base now so it's a bit easier to see. I'll just let it run. We're going on two kilohertz. Now, really, I mean, you w you wouldn't expect output from a uh, any cartridge to be significant above probably 12, 13 kilohertz, but it'll be interesting to see how how uniform this uh, transformer system is. We're just passing three kilohertz now. leave it running. All I'm doing is just altering the time based on the scope so you uh, you can see clearly what the, what the waveform is doing. And also it's a good this is a good test that if, if you run it through the frequency range if something shifts like one one channel drops its level then there's either a sort of like a, a shorted turn on the transformer or maybe even a cracked core in the transformer but so far it's looking pretty good, we're passing 5 kilohertz now. I'm just going to leave it running. I think what we'll do after that is I'll try and sweep it on the uh, audio analyzer. What I, I'll, I won't use the uh, HP 8903's um, output because I can't really match it to uh, the 20 ohm impedance. But what I will do is I'll set it up on the uh, audio uh, measuring side of it so I can measure the output level and we can see a dB reference point so if I set it at one kilohertz with a zero dB reference point and it gives an idea of how much roll off and sort of overall frequency response that this, this transformer system's got. So we're approaching seven kilohertz and you can see there's no no change in amplitude really. This is a fairly slow sweep I uh, could have swept it faster, I suppose, but it's uh, 20 milliseconds per step, and I think our resolution is 10 hertz. So every uh, 20 milliseconds, it steps 10 hertz. I rarely use this um, audio analyzer, this uh, signal generator, but uh, for things like this, it's absolutely brilliant. It's you know, it's it's because you can match transformer impedances and things like that. Um, so sorry, just adjusting this so you can see it a bit easier. I'm putting 10 kilohertz, no change in output. The level's still good. 
So we'll run it through to the end of the 20 kilohertz uh, range. You can always move on to the the next section if you like, but uh, I'm intrigued to see how flat it is, and I want to record this anyway for the uh, basically for the for the customer who's uh, paying the money for the repair. He can see the response of this. Uh, transform it and it will confirm that it's all okay and working correctly. We might be showing a slight roll off now. We're approaching 12 kilohertz, 11.4, 0.5. I could manually sweep it if I wanted to do it. I'm going to let, let it run through. I think we'll stop it at 15 kilohertz. But 13 now, from what I can see, the amplitude hasn't shifted at all. So, yeah, the next step will be is I'll set it up on the uh, audio analyzer and we can measure the uh, frequency response on that. It's 14 kilohertz. So for those who don't know, um, frequency response, if you're under the age, you're probably well, 12 to 13 years old, you could probably hear it almost 20 kilohertz. Uh, when you're up to 18, 19, 20, you could probably hear it as 17, 18. Um, I can hear, I'm 52, I can hear to about 14 and a half, 15 kilohertz. That's the maximum I can hear to now. Um, so frequency response drops off fairly quickly with age. Seems to be worth with men. Actually, my girlfriend's hearing, because she used to go to lots of rock concerts and things, one, one ear, and we actually did a test with this audio analyzer, one ear is quite badly uh, attenuated at higher frequencies, and the other ear is pretty good. So. It depends on the individual. So at 17 kilohertz, I'm going to stop now. Um, that's uh, pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with that. That's a flat response. We'll just run it through one more time. I'll, I'll sweep. I'll increase the sweep speed, and then we'll run it through on the uh, 8903 and see what we get on there. Okay, ignoring this uh, left-hand channel because that's that part of the, the meter isn't working, this part of this uh, analyzer isn't working, all we're interested in is this uh, dB reference point here. So we've got one kilohertz set on the Rosen Schwartz, I'm going to start the sweep, I expect a minus uh, figure as we start, uh, we should get back up to zeros, it sweeps through one kilohertz and then from there on we'll get an idea of our uh, overall frequency response. So let's start the sweep now. Press the right button. Frequency sweep auto. There we go. So it's our roll off there. 200 hertz. I've got sweep, sweep speed much faster. So we've got a very slight roll off and 100 hertz. 1 kilohertz, our reference point should be at 0 dB about now. There we go. Now, also bear in mind, as I said before, we, we're not perfectly matched on the output. And you can clearly see that the sort of low frequency performance is pretty good, but it has got a roll off at low frequencies. We're now at two kilohertz. We've got a very slight gain, um, but you wouldn't be able to hear that. Um, fasting three kilohertz. And that's what I would class as flat as a pancake. You know, anything plus or minus 2 dB uh, is, in my mind, flat. Uh, we're passing 3 in the kilohertz. As I say, ignore this. This, this isn't doing anything. 4 kilohertz plus 0.2 a dB. We'll leave it to run through like we did before. So there goes 5 kilohertz. 
plus 0.2 dB. Now what I'd expect to happen, uh, it really depends on the transformer design, but I expect to happen as it passes about 8 to 10 kilohertz, this level will start to drop back off again. And what of course we could do I suppose, no it's not easy to do, but I was going to put it on the uh, put a craft out but it's not going to be so straightforward because I can't get the matching on on the output of this transfer uh, the audio analyzer so um, that's why I'm relying on the Roden Schwartz because it gives me the uh, output impedance I need to simulate a moving coil transformer or moving coil cartridge okay we're passing seven and a half kilohertz Frequency response is absolutely flat now, it hasn't shifted at all in the last sort of 4 kilohertz or so. So it, it clearly looks like it's working perfectly well. Now, I'm actually only monitoring the uh, left hand channel at the moment, but as you saw on the scope, the response is flat. So we're uh, not worried about uh, any problems with matching on the two sides of the transformer. So basically that was a fairly simple repair, a little bit fiddly to work on, uh, lots of fragile wires and things like that. You start to see our frequency level dropping off slightly now um, as the frequency gains and I expect to see a fairly fast fall off now, probably above 10 kilohertz as the transformer losses start to kick in. Uh, but uh, very good performance, very good performance from this uh, this transformer system and it should sound really nice as I say it's it's a, a totally passive system which is quite nice um, you probably need a fairly good input sensitivity on a moving magnet transfer um, moving magnet input of your amplifier but uh, yeah very nice little setup here just gonna see if we ever get to our zero dB reference point which was at one kilohertz so our deviation from basically 1 kilohertz to uh, 12 kilohertz so far has been less than 0.2 of a dB, which is absolutely flat. And you can see quite a rapid uh, roll off in frequency now. I actually didn't realise that this left hand meter is actually reflecting the input frequency even though it's uh, not generating any output so it's uh, acting as just a frequency counter. Okay, it's a coming up 15 kilohertz. There's our zero or DB reference point, so at 15 kilohertz and 1 kilohertz it's, it's exactly the same level, so there's a slight hump between 1 kilohertz and 15 kilohertz. And you're getting a fairly rapid fall off now, we're well beyond probably what a, a cartridge would put out frequency response wise. And you see the, the uh, roll offs becoming quite fast now. So I think we'll pause it there. I think we've made a point with this. So yeah, that's the uh, little Autofin ST80SE input matching transformer system. I hope that was of some interest, not really electronics, but more, I suppose, a quick repair on the uh, a transformer, basically. That's all it is. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, more to come.